So in this video, I want to talk about rendering and render engines. Now by rendering, I mean, we're going to take a 3D scene like what you can see on my screen and turn it into a 2D image that you can save, share, print out, do whatever you want. The render engines are the code that's going to do that work for us. Now in Blender 2.8 and 2.9, there are two primary uh, render engines. That's EV and Cycles. EV is intended to be very quick. It's great for prototyping. It's great for iterating. And if you're doing low poly work, it might be all that you need. The Cycles engine, on the other hand, is more physically realistic. It's actually doing ray tracing, but it takes a lot longer to render that image. And the best way to demonstrate that is to simply render some images. So I go up to the render menu. I'm going to choose the first option here, which is render image. There is an option there to render an animation. We're not going to talk about that in this video. I click that button. Another window pops up very quickly and you can see the rendered image. Now what's happened here is the EV render engine has added shadows and there's a light on the far right that's causing those shadows. It's also causing the objects nearer to it to be brighter or to be lighter and the objects farther away are darker. If you look at the top left, you can see the time taken for that render just 38 hundredths of a second. Pretty quick, pretty great. If you look at the shadows here from this first cube, you can see that they look they look OK, but there's a little bit of what we call artifacting there. There's a little bit of a rough edge. It's not really what the shadow should look like. Shadows should kind of fade out and they shouldn't have these weird little ridges. And that's just one of the results of using EV. It's doing more approximations and doing the calculations quicker. And as a result, not quite as accurate. If I come over here to my camera icon, this is going to be our render properties. And the top option here is our render engine. If I click on that, you can see that there's actually three render engines. EV, Workbench, and Cycles. Now, Workbench, we're not really going to talk about. We're not going to make use of it in this series of videos or in my class. If I come down here to Cycles, we'll switch the render engine to the Cycles engine. This is going to take substantially longer to do our render, and I can do that by pressing F12 or going up to the Render menu in the top left. So on one level, this image looks a lot like what we got from the EV engine, and maybe YouTube's compression is going to make it more difficult to see. But if we look at the shadows, those shadows are a lot cleaner. We don't have that artifacting. We don't have that weird little uh, edge happening there. But we do have some what we might call fireflies. We've got these dots and spots here, and that's coming from the ray tracing of the cycles engine. And there's a couple ways that we can fix that. We close this we can come down here and open up the denoising menu and click on this option here so that we're going to denoise the render. We could also denoise the viewport, but we don't really need to do that. If I come back, press F12 again to re-render, we can wait for it to re-render the entire image. So if we look at this, those little speckles, those fireflies are gone. Our image is much cleaner and looks much better. But if you look up at our time, we've now taken almost 32 seconds to render this image. With EV, it took less than half a second. With Cycles, it's going to take 32 seconds for this simple image. Now, that's not a huge deal uh, just to wait 30 seconds. But if your renders take longer and longer, they might take five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Some might even take half an hour or an hour to render an image. The difference between EV and Cycles gets more and more noticeable. So since Cycles is taking so long, we want to make it as fast as possible. And there's another important option here. That's the device. If you click on that, you can see that there's CPU and GPU. If I come down to GPU, it's going to be our graphics card. Now, mine is grayed out. Now, if that's happening to you, there's probably one of two options. Maybe there's some other ones, but at least two options that might be happening or issues that might be occurring. One, you may not have a GPU. If you're on a small laptop, you're not going to have a GPU. Or if you do have a GPU, you can come up to the edit menu, go to preferences, and then come down here to system. The top option here is the cycles render device. By default, it's set to none. Click on CUDA. You can see here that I've turned on both my graphics card and my CPU. So it's going to use both of those to render uh, the image. If I close this, you can see now that the GPU is not grayed out and it's going to take considerably less time than it did with just the CPU. So there you go with the CPU and the GPU working together. It only took 17 seconds, almost cutting our render time in half, which is pretty useful and pretty convenient if you're going to be doing a lot of iterations on your image. There's a lot more to learn. There's a lot more knobs and dials that you can play with in both the rendering and the render engines. Um, but this is the basics and will get you a pretty good quality image 
right out of the box.